right, so I had a couple of requests to kind of show my process when I'm scripting tracks um, and just kind of give an idea of how I get the lights to look a certain way. So I thought I would just kind of show um, project files. And in this video, I was going to show the project file for the movement by Matroda, um, a really dope song with a big bass line because it's got like a lot of elements I like to use in tracks and it's, it's not a fairly complex song. I think it's a pretty good one. So I'll just give a small tour. So these yellow ones are the color wash lights that are on that center truss. Uh, these four right here are the spotlights that are in the center of that truss. They're like right in the middle of the center. Um, then these four right here are the spotlights that are in the peripheral. Um, so these ones are the right, I believe, and then these ones are the left. Um, this is the laser, which I seldom use, but um, there's a few shows where I use it and it's pretty cool. Um, and then the spider lights, and these are each, so this is like the overall intensity of the track, but each one of these is the, um, so you can see this is B blue and then it's on the top. So I had to name all these, but this is like the red top cell on the right spider light um, because there's two halves to the light and they move independently. It can get kind of frustrating programming these because if you have programming or if you're programming something for both lights, which is 18 tracks plus the two intensity tracks, overall intensity tracks, um, you can only really see less than a fourth of what you're programming at a time because you can only see four. You can't resize these for seemingly no reason at all. And then, um, so this is the other spider. And then below that, I got these two spotlights that face the DJ booth. This is just the group intensity. Um, and then below here, these are the two bar lights that are behind the DJ table that I just picked up. All right, so I guess I'll just run through the, the whole track or just most of it from start to finish. But um, as you can see, this, is, this isn't this is black. This is like a very dim blue. Um, it's easier to have this intensity be 100% and then do a dim blue versus making that a full color blue and then turning it down. I mean, it's, it's just, I think it's easier. So you can see, I just let some simple kick and then I, uh, there's like a hi-hat and I use these side spotlights for a lot of percussion. So you See, there's like that accent there. I'll go boom. Um, just as simple, these center lights, spent center spots. And then obviously, once you <clears throat> kind of figure out, I mean, that's a regular recurring thing for this little part. So all you had to do is just go like this, boom, copy and paste to there, copy and paste to there. Um, a lot of times I'll just work on one of these center spotlights. I mean, I do use a lot of patterns that do do different things for um, each light is doing something different. They're not perfectly mirrored all the time, but for the most part, if they are, I'll just, then at the end of doing just this track, I'll copy the whole thing, paste it to the other ones, um, make sure to avoid the areas where I did do something different for each light. Um, so you can see kind of there's just a um, simple riser type thing, so it's just increasing intensity, super simple. <laughs> so this is just like a snare, the snare pattern here. Um, did that mostly looking at the waveform. So yeah, just a. Um, so you can see they kind of bounce off each other a little bit, which I like to do. I like to kind of bounce a little bit. And then, um, yeah, for the double clap here, right for the drop, I actually switch it to the center wash lights, which I think is pretty cool. And um, the positions I use there, I just have an all down position where both all the lights are facing down and all up. So it's got that. They're coming down. And then right before the bass line kicks in, there's um, like kind of a little percussion there, which I kind of did right here. And then you can see, so for the percussion, it's super simple. I mean, this is like the easiest pattern you could do. You just have to do one thing. I mean, a lot of times I'll just get this or whatever, just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. Oh, there's like a little, right here, you can see there's like a little snare before. Just add the snare in. I mean, you're just tweaking this pattern, which is very simple and repeats. 
Um, yeah, and, yeah, so it goes, it has a like snare little build or whatever. So you're bouncing off one another here. The hi-hat stays and then, yeah, the simple. So for the bass line, I just did, I do this vibration effect. And it's um it's pretty simple, but it's um it it looks really cool because I mean the bass line obviously you want it to look like it's vibrating, at least I do, because when I feel like a big bass line like the one in the song, I feel like that the the bass is vibrating, I don't just want to do some stagnant color. I want to add some like texture to it. So this one's like uh like kind of bouncing off one another. So you can see here um, on the kick drums, I have it raised a little bit, but I'll tell you, I'll show you how I would approach it now. So just pretend that this section is over here. And um, then I can show you how to kind of <clears throat> create the vibration effects. Um, the camera that kind of picks it up, but in person is a, is a really cool effect. And I think it's something that is unique. And I mean, I've had people ask me if the bass is like shaking the fog, you have to kind of experiment with this and play around with it to make it look like um the bass is like moving the lights etc or whatever so yeah so basically just get this up i mean <clears throat> for this baseline it goes a lot longer obviously so you can just copy and paste this part here and there's just you can mess with this distance from the trough to the to peak um obviously the closer to the top the more the, the more subtle it is all the way down here this is just a strobe obviously but um, I never use the strobe in this thing. I, I'd rather just manually do it so I can visualize it instead of having just some random thing down here. Um, so then, you know, once you kind of get that, so this one's a, <clears throat> these ones are bouncing off one another. What I mean by that is that they're inverse. So the dim part of this one would be the bright part of this one. It's set and vice versa. So kind of I'm, I'm kind of doing a sloppy job here but you get the picture and then yeah copy and paste copy and paste so this is like <clears throat> gonna give a crazy vibration effect and um and so you can see here i have them like turned down like very low and what i would do and and then accenting the kick here and what i do now and um it just kind of shows how dated this show is in terms of what i've been doing lately um is i would go like 100 so this is like just a dimmer i mean this is basically the same as this i mean the result what the lights are going to output is like very similar um and then here on the kick i would do a higher red so it's got that punch on the kicks but it's going to be like a dimmer shade so there's that like um, juxtapositioning so it allows it to kind of punch on the kick um, and then so for the colors um, I like using red as like a low note blue is kind of another low note and then if you listen to the bass line there's kind of like a um, higher pitch section here higher pitch note Um, so that's why I use like the light blue because it's obviously a brighter light. Um, yeah, I like the I like to change the colors to the baseline. I think it, I think it, I, that's one of the things I really like. Even though you kind of risk using just a ton of colors, but I think it's, I, I think it's something I like to do and from my personal viewing. But it's all personal preference. I mean, you could just have it like this and have it all be red. But I think if it moves to the baseline, it's cooler. Um, so once I get this section, I mean, this section is identical to this section is identical to that. So once I create that, I can just copy, paste, copy, and paste. And same with the exact same inverse pattern up there. Um, much of the song uses that baseline. I mean, you're just copy and pasting and then, so you copy and paste here and then it's like too much. And then you just come in here and delete that out and change the so this, this, um, drop has like this kind of harsh grating not grating but it's got it's got this like synth where it's you know, i mean i'll just play it i mean obviously like the bass line has this like higher pitch part to it um 
that's like it's, it's playing the same notes as the bass line but so that's why i do this brighter section i bring the orange in brighter colors <laughs> And then it drops back down to what the baseline was before dimmer. But um, so for this one, there's like a very there's like a over the top of it. It's kind of going like uh, do, 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 do. so. That's just simply like I just use this white, and then the overall intensity of that is decreasing. And then it's just a simple position all up to all down, I believe. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can see there's like that do 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 and it, like it, the pitch goes up and then it goes back down so that's why there's this movement the movement of the lights goes it goes up and then there's like kind of a point where they come back down which i think i timed it up pretty well but it was like a lot of trial and error of kind of figuring out where to put this kind of fulcrum for the lights switch on and then that part right there is just um just takes a lot of time just lining them up each little pluck or whatever lining it up with what the song is um but i think that turned out pretty well yeah so you can hear this is like that clap again And, and I'm just showing like the right light, but it's exactly like once I created it up there, I just copied and pasted it down to this light. I think this show is perfectly symmetrical for these two lights. So um, once I kind of knew that I was going to go like they were going to be perfectly symmetrical, I just don't work at all on this light. I just leave it totally blank. And then at the end, I come through, copy and paste every one of these tracks up here. We'll just go out to the whole show, copy it, make sure it's lined up, paste it down here. Um, very simple, it's a lot of time. Um, and then there's this kind of middle section where there's this... I mean, it's like the same as a bass line, so I just do the colors and then... increase the, the intensity of it um, and then bring it back down so yeah so for this one like the this like i mean it's like the same thing at the beginning of the first drop but it's slightly different it's got like kind of this transformation to it so it gets like higher pitch i want to say and like detuned so i wanted to like go to white because i just i mean white to me is like the most detuned color um so i it's just kind of decreasing this and then increasing that and then you can hear like the snare goes and then so that's just the snare so i mean this is just this these tracks right here I, I do separate from the rest of the show i mean i'll go through and do all the color lights and maybe i'll like once i hear something i'll like go oh i should do, i should do that and before i forget and i'll come down here and do something but uh the percussion i'll usually just do last because all it is is just copying the snares maybe if there's like a build section build or like a riser i want to do with these um typically i stick to the percussion uh with these so it just gives it like this simple pattern right here, I think, gives the show a lot of rhythm. Um, and in songs, I mean, this song doesn't really, the hi-hat doesn't really come out much, but in songs where the hi-hat does come out um, for, like, 16 beats or 32 beats or whatever, it's, like, very noticeable. And, like, the 
even if you're not like looking at those lights subconsciously it does like change like the viewing um like you can see here there's just like this little part where the hi-hat does kick out for like the first time in 32 beats or whatever and then it does the double clap if you look at this color track look how much of it is this color pattern so it might look like oh it's a very complex show i think this is a very simple show but it's one of my favorites um because i the color lights are well done or the, the spider lights i think are well done so yeah that's just kind of one of the project files so i'll try to upload more videos of them just showing them off but um thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.